Hello, and welcome to Talk to Downtown. My name is Courtney Wood. I'm the Economic Development Director for the Downtown Stockton Alliance, which is a 501c6 nonprofit property-based business improvement district serving downtown Stockton. This webinar series is intended to connect our business owners, property owners, and visitors with the organizations, people, and resources that can help them address issues which are of top concern to them. Today, we have several guests from the San Joaquin Council of Governments, also known as SJ COG. So we have with us today, Executive Director, Diane Nguyen, Senior Regional Planner, Timothy Ohaya, Senior Regional Planner, Christine Corrales, Associate Regional Planner, Joel Campus, Senior Program Specialist, Yvette Davis. So I'm very happy to have them all here today. Uh, we'll begin by having our guests go ahead and introduce themselves and share a little bit about their role at SJ COG and what they do there. Then I'll go ahead and ask them my questions I've outlined for them. And at the end, we'll open it up to the viewers to go ahead and ask your questions. And with that, I would like to say thank you to all my guests for being here today. And um, Diane, if you'd like to go first, sharing with us a little bit about yourself and your role at SJ COG. Thank you, Courtney. Uh, again, I'm Diane Nguyen. I am the executive director of SJ COG. We also go by the acronym of COG as well. The San Joaquin Council of Governments is the regional transportation planning agency for San Joaquin County. We started in 1968 and our agency is overseen by a board of directors made up of elected officials from every city in San Joaquin County and members of the board of supervisors of San Joaquin. I started my career at SJ COG in 1995 after I graduated with a master's in urban and regional planning from the University of California, Irvine. Uh, my dream job is doing what I do today, and that is working on transportation in order to improve the quality of life of residents and to make an impact in economic development. I had never been to San Joaquin before uh, I took this job. In fact, my first experience with San Joaquin County is downtown Stockton. In 1995, I took the Amtrak train uh, to the Amtrak South San Joaquin station and walked from that station to downtown Stockton for my job interview. During that walk, I saw the historic buildings and the great community character that is showcased in the downtown. And I felt that this area had a lot of potential for innovative, creative and much needed transportation improvements. So I did accept the job and I currently, as executive director, oversee a staff of almost 35 people uh, at the COG. And we work on many different programs, including Measure K, which we are responsible for implementing. And Measure K, as many of you may be aware, is the half cent sales tax for transportation improvements. And that those dollars fund a diverse array of transportation investments ranging from bus and rail transit to state highway facilities to regional roads and bicycle facilities and many, many more. So my team is here and we're really excited to talk about the many other programs offered at the COG. Thank you so much, Diane, for sharing with us about your role as the executive director. I loved hearing a little bit about why uh, SJ COG is really important to downtown. And thank you so much for being here, Diane. So thank you. Next, let's go ahead and hear from Joel. Great, thank you. And, and thank you for, for making this happen. And uh, I'm just so excited to spread awareness of SJ COG, by the way. And so um, my name is Joel Campos, <clears throat> excuse me. And uh, I was born and raised in Modesto actually, but um, I, I became familiar similar uh, like Diane with, uh, with downtown or the Stockton area um, through rail. <laughs> I used to take the ACE train to San Jose State. I got my master's degree in urban and regional planning at San Jose. Um, and then uh, another way I was connected to Stockton before I was employed at uh, San Joaquin Council Governments is I actually um, deployed with the, the National Guard unit out of the Stockton airport. Um, there's a helicopter unit there. And so I deployed with them um, to Iraq 17, 18. And then I came back um, in September, 2018. And um, I saw that SJ COG was hiring. So I applied and uh, thank you, Diane, for hiring me in uh, 
2018, October, and so I've been here since. And I'm an associate regional planner now, and I deal with all things uh, transit, basically. So um, again, going back to my, my uh, previous statements about rail, um, I also love uh, bus transit, anything transit, I'm the transit guy, basically. And then also I deal with um, active transportation programs, I'm in transit needs, and uh, uh, things of that sort. So again, thank you for having us. Awesome. So you're the transit, transit person. <laughs> Thank you, Joel. Okay, and Yvette. You're on mute, Yvette. Oh, you're, I think you're muted, Yvette. So sorry. Thank you. Um, thank you for having us. Um, and thank you for the opportunity for uh, letting us share um, all that SJCOG is doing. My name is Yvette Davis, and I am the Senior Program Specialist um, that uh, and I oversee communications and uh, transportation demand management. Um, and I'll get more into what that means um, a little later. Um, I've been at HJ COG for about almost 15 years. So throughout that time, I have focused on um, community and employer outreach and marketing and communication. So um, it's, it's been um, a very interesting role for me and love it and continue to love it to this day. So, and I have a, uh, my background is in marketing, so I have a marketing degree, so. Marketing, okay. Thank you, Yvette, and Tim. Yes, hi, uh, my name is Tim Kohaya. I'm a senior regional planner for SJ COG and I'm main, my main project right now is the uh, regional transportation plan sustainable community strategy. I know that's a mouthful. Um, and uh, that's my major project. I'm also I'm basically, Joel is our transit guy. I'm the uh, our data guy. So I'm in charge of our data center, which is called Community Pulse. Uh, some of the other things I do is uh, we, we do check, uh, we're, SJ Cog is also the Airport Land Use Commission. So we look at plans that are either adjacent or near the airports to ensure the you know the continued uh, oper or main or operability of the airports. So, and my background is geography. I went to Sac State um, and got got a degree in geography, and um, I've been working for Sacramento County for almost thirty years in the planning department. I've done current planning and long range planning, and this is a, I got hired by SJ Cog about a year and a half ago. This is my first time that I'm working for a regional planning agency rather than a local planning agency. So. Thank you. Yes, perfect. Thank you, Tim. And now, Christine. Hi, Courtney, and hi, downtown. My name is Christine Corrales. Thanks for having me. I'm a senior planner at SJ Cog. I've been with the agency since 2015. And um, a little bit about me I'm born and raised in Stockton. Um, I left town to get my education. So I, uh, I earned a bachelor's degree from UCLA in anthropology and Asian American studies. And then um, I did a little bit of work in between before going back to grad school. I realized that urban planning was a huge interest of mine, especially because it connects to communities and quality of life um, and health outcomes too. That's kind of a background interest of mine. And so uh, once I finished grad school, I, I actually came back to town um, seeking opportunities and. Um, so I was hired on as a, uh, an intern, actually, uh, thanks to Diane. Uh, <laughs> she took a cold call from me, and um, now I'm here. And for SJ Cog, I'm our staff lead on um, regional planning studies. So I like to think of it as kind of like our research and development partner or department. You know, we're thinking about um, some of the new emerging issues that uh, regional planning needs to kind of address, like climate change, for example, or housing affordability, some of these kind of big issues that traditionally the COG hasn't focused on because of our focus on transportation. So I get to kind of um, help lead our work in thinking about these other big problems that link to transportation. Um, additionally, I lead our housing, regional housing work. So anything that um, is uh, related to helping our local jurisdictions um, think about uh, accelerating development and or um, thinking about how to provide more affordable housing. Um, I'm usually involved in something 
like that. And lastly, um, I am our staff lead on community partnerships, which is kind of really open ended at this point, but um, I try to help facilitate COGS uh, engagement at the community level, uh, whether it's developing new relationships and new partnerships with local organizations. So I'll stop there. Okay, great. Thank you, Christine. And thanks everyone for introducing yourself and helping us to know a little bit more about your background and your role. Um, so now let's dive in, let's dive into the question. Okay, so the first question, um, can you tell me and whoever might be the best person to answer this, what would you say is the overarching purpose or vision uh, for the San Joaquin Council of Governments? And like, what are, what's like a high level overview of how you guys are working to achieve that vision? I'll take that question. As I mentioned, uh, the Council of Governments is a joint powers authority and our overall vision is to ensure that we convene and work with all the stakeholders to discuss regional issues and interregional issues. Uh, a lot of the topics are on transportation, but it doesn't have to be limited transportation. We provide a forum for that discussion. Uh, specifically, the mission of the Council of Governments is to partner with local governments, the private sector, and community groups and facilitate and advocate for the overall betterment of the region and to develop a comprehensive strategy to achieve solutions. In short, I would say uh, if I could consolidate the mission statement to something very brief, it is better together is our mission. Uh, in terms of our vision, we try to accomplish that through funding the highest priority and highest need transportation projects. We try to accomplish that through uh, making decisions on policy that impact uh, jobs housing balance. And uh, we try to accomplish that by funding a multimodal, which means different types of transit projects where people in this community have options to getting to work, school, running errands, uh, other than uh, having a car. So trying to find other modes uh, to have accessibility for the residents in terms of bike and ped projects, bus and rail projects, et cetera. Uh, our, also our vision is environmental sustainability. We accomplish that through efforts on our habitat conservation plan. In this plan, uh, we work with developers who are interested in uh, mitigating for environmental impacts by purchasing uh, land uh, uh, from this program that we have uh, already developed in these conservation uh, activities. Uh, the other thing is, while we do want to address immediate uh, needs, the highest priorities, uh, our vision also is to piece them together in what we call a longer range plan. What we do as a regional transportation planning agency is we plan 25, 30 years out in terms of the need. I often, when I talk to, to family members or friends about what I do, uh, I use a story about how we all you know, are on a roadway and it's very rare uh, when we're driving around and we see construction that someone says, or, or we often think about, gosh, I'm so glad they're constructing and making that improvement now it's needed right now. Uh, that's rare because oftentimes what we think or what I think is, it's about time. We needed that improvement a long, long time ago. And why we reached that conclusion is it takes a lot of time to plan uh, for what is exactly needed for the area. And it even takes that much longer to fund. Uh, many of these projects, these larger size projects, state highway widenings and uh, interchange improvements, they are in the tens of millions of dollars. And that's why oftentimes when you're encountering construction, the need may have been well in advance, but the effort to try to secure all that funding took that additional time. Uh, so we try to develop a vision to, 
to decrease that level of time so that the need and the funding are in a better alignment. And in order for us to do that, we work very closely uh, with all of you uh, in establishing those priorities. I always say, if everything is a priority, there's no priorities. So the Council of Governments is involved in very critical, strategic, and hard decisions on what projects ultimately do get funded. Amazing. So I heard so many different things in what you said. I heard transit. I heard um, housing from earlier was mentioned. I heard the environment um, and funding. So this is all really, really interesting. Um, leading into some of what you talked about um, just now, how is SJCOG funded? Like, where are those dollars coming from? All right. Uh, we wear many hats. And so with when I say hats, we have many roles. And with those roles, there are some set funding related to that. One of the hats we wear is we administer the Measure K half cent sales tax program. When we do th th those roles uh, related to Measure K, we do have administration fees or, or funds coming from the Measure K program for those activities. So Measure K is one funding source for the COG. Uh, one of the other hats we wear is the Metropolitan Planning Organization. That is a federal hat. And that hat comes with federal responsibilities in complying with regional planning process and regulations. And there are federal funds that pay for those activities. Uh, another role or hat we wear is the Regional Transportation Planning Agency. That is a state hat and state funds come into that picture. Uh, so we have a mix of uh, local, federal, and state funds that finance our budget and our operations. Wow, amazing. A lot of responsibility, <laughs> a lot of responsibility. Um, what is something that you'd like the public to understand about the powers of SJCOG? Um, is there something that you'd like to share with them about that and your reach? Seems like you have a lot of ground to cover. It's hard to answer this question in just a few, uh, few minutes, but I think the big takeaway for the public, if you can walk away with one thing about the COG is what I mentioned earlier, our acronym, that we're a council of governments, we provide that form. And while I mentioned you wear all those different hats in English or kind of drilling it down, those hats are intended to improve the quality of life uh, for residents and businesses in San Joaquin, to address jobs housing balance. That's a technical term, uh, but it means bring the jobs here in beautiful San Joaquin County, bring the jobs here in downtown Stockton, bring the economy here into the region. Uh, I, uh, I have lived in this area in the first part of my uh, tenure at SJ Cog. Now, I lived in Stockton for 10 years. I, uh, I love Stockton. I used to bike along the Calaveras River Trail. I would be on Pacific Avenue all the time and it's still a, a great place to be. And then uh, with the downtown, there's lots going on when I lived there and there's lots going on now, but there's certainly a lot more potential that can be tapped. Uh, so what I want people to understand about the roles of the COG is that we're here to bring jobs, improve the economy, and we attempt to do that through providing a transportation system that facilitates the movement of people, the movement of goods, and uh, provides transportation options. Amazing. Thank you. Thanks for summing it up and for helping us understand a little bit more about exactly what you guys have powers over. Um, the next thing I'd like to ask is, can you share a little bit about some programs or resources that SJGOG has to offer? I know you have a lot, so this may be a question for everyone. <laughs> well, like, yeah, and I can I can start that, that one. Um, and we do have a lot. And Diane mentioned a lot of the programs that, that we have. And I'll I'll mention just a few that maybe the public um, is, is not familiar with, um, such as, and I'll start with DIBS. 
So dibs is um, not the ice cream, um, but it is the transportation demand management program that Semokin uh, SJ Cog uh, established over 30 years ago. So it's a, it's a three county program. Uh, we partner with uh, Stanislaus County and Merced County to offer the program. Um, it is essentially a, uh, a program to promote alternative transportation, smart travel options, so that we um, minimize um, you know, the, the idea for people to drive alone um, and reduce congestion and overall improve air quality. Um, so we promote um, carpooling, van pooling, biking to work. We partner with the, with the downtown, with the DSA uh, during our bike to work event. Um, we have, um, we work directly with employers to um, educate the employees on the various services and programs that we offer, incentives. Uh, we have a, a great trip planning system. Diane mentioned multimodal. It's a multimodal trip planning system so people can uh, search for carpool buddies, even, uh, you know, bike information. Um, and we have over 10,000 people registered in that system. We have almost 500 van pools throughout uh, the three county region. Um, so that's a, that's a great program. We also have a park and ride program, which um, people may not be aware of. So as part of our transportation demand management program, um, we support um, people who are interested in ride sharing, riding transit. So we identify locations to make it easier for people to, to connect so that they can do that more conveniently. Um, there's the Easy Hub, which uh, Joelle will talk about shortly, um, which is another trip planning uh, system through Vamos and an easy um, uh, fare payment system for, for transit. Um, and Diane mentioned the Habitat program. Um, and uh, also we have a freeway service patrol program, which some of the viewers may have, um, um, you know, uh, utilized in the past. So freeway service patrol is a partnership with, between SJ Call Caltrans and CHP. And we offer, um, we work with private towing companies to uh, service major corridors, uh, major highways, such as I-205 and, and I-5 to provide service to motorists that, you know, may get stranded um, through, you know, if they've got a flat tire, if they run out of gas, um, we respond to um, accidents. So um, we, we uh, make it um, easier for motorists to um, uh, uh, get off the freeway. Um, so the program is about safety and uh, improving the traffic flow. Uh, improving uh, air quality and, and congestion. So those are just some of the, the programs that um, the public may not be aware of that SJ Cog manages and um, they're, they're great programs. That's amazing. For the towing um, that you were talking about, I'm just curious, is that um, funded all by the, through SJ Cog or does the like stranded person need to pay for the towing? It's a free service um, to the motorists and uh, Caltrans provides um, the majority of the funding. Um, SJ Cog also provides uh, a match. So the it is funded between Caltrans and SJ Cog. That's amazing. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, thanks Yvette. You're welcome. Um, did anyone else have anything that they wanted to add in for programs? Yeah. Um, hi, this is Joelle again. Um, actually, there's one program I'd like to highlight. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it's going to bring it a little bit uh, closer to downtown. Um, it's actually our active transportation program, our regional active transportation program. Um, and this one focuses on bike and, pre bike and ped uh, facilities. And um, actually, recently, just in uh, March of this year, our board voted um, to uh, allocate over $20 million in programs uh, or in, in projects throughout the region. But um, within that, uh, there were actually five projects um, within downtown Stockton. Um, and uh, I, I want to say I worked on this project, um, you know, for quite some time. Um, and uh, after reviewing all the applications, Stockton did a excellent job in highlighting the demand 
for um, active transportation projects within downtown Stockton. And some of those projects that um, it, it submitted applications for were sidewalk improvements along um, Weber Avenue. Um, there's a, a, a bike lane projects on California Street, um, and then just a bike and ped um, going east to west on uh, Oak and uh, Park Street and even Fremont Street. So um, these, all these projects were um, individual projects, right? They didn't just lump them in. Um, they they uh, focused, uh, the city of Stockton focused uh, on each of these projects individually and they made the case for them. And so they were awarded um, uh, a large portion of, of the pot and so kudos to the city of Stockton in making that effort. And so um, I just wanted to highlight that um, our regional active transportation program, um, it's actually made up of federal, state and local funding. We brought that all together to create this large pot instead of having just like, just a small uh, amount um, that the whole region needs to compete for. We are able to bring uh, all, you know, uh, funding from a bunch of resources together and then offer that to our region. And then of course, Stockton did an excellent job along with um, the rail agency, the San Joaquin Regional uh, Rail Commission. Um, they actually submitted an application uh, that focused on bike and ped here in downtown Stockton. Um, and so connecting the, the, uh, the, um, the downtown bus station with the A station, improving sidewalk um, in between those stations. So um, that's that's one project I wanted to highlight. Awesome! I'm glad to hear it. I'm glad to hear that the city has applied, and now there, there will be several improvements in downtown, like sidewalks. Yeah, definitely, there are some sidewalks that need improvement. So this is yes, it, it was a definitely a competitive program, and they did an excellent job. So that's going to be great for downtown. Awesome. And, and Courtney, if I, I could add, uh, yes. what, what theme you're getting from Yvette and Joel is we invest in downtown Stockton. We invest in the region because our agency, uh, our mission and our belief is we need to have better transportation, uh, the best transportation in order to get people to business. Uh, and uh, I want to say just a and also another personal note by our agency, we are in downtown Stockton. Uh, we're at the corner of Weber and American, and it, it is a site uh, that we actually chose. Uh, when we were renters, we looked, uh, when our lease was up, we were on El Dorado Street, and we looked at other places uh, for our office. And uh, some of those places were along March Lane, North Stockton, uh, uh, and we decided, uh, the leadership at that time said, downtown Stockton is the place to be. We need to invest in the betterment of the downtown area, and we need to anchor ourselves and, send, and work more effectively with the city and the county governments that are in downtown. And so we are invested in downtown. The staff here frequent the downtown businesses on a daily basis and uh, it, it, so we do have a lot of stake in the success of downtown Stockton. And we love having you guys. <laughs> so we're very happy to have you in our downtown, have your office there. Um, awesome. Okay, I think the next question that I would like to ask you all is, I know that you're looking for better together. You're looking to kind of combine um, coordination between the city, the states, the public. Um, so how can individuals like provide feedback or like what kind of outreach do you do to individuals? Um, and how can they like go ahead and provide their feedback maybe for transit needs or other things like that? What kind of outreach are you guys doing? I can start from a from a general perspective. Um, so we um, you know during the pandemic like most businesses, we, we had to pivot um, and find different approaches of trying to inform, engage, and educate the public on the various uh, projects and programs. So we utilized the, the website heavily. Um, 
so the really the 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 best way for the public to um, get information on meetings um, engagement um, projects um, events is uh, to subscribe on our website that would be the first step um, at, at sjcog.org there's a notification button uh, easy convenient to subscribe um, and we push out a lot of information that way uh, social media um, is a great way to uh, to get involved um, dibs has a a uh, separate website, dibsmyway.com, because there's so many resources. So um, accessing information and the uh, services and benefits for, for dibs can be obtained through that website. And then um, everything else, really, we, we try to at least post on our website or push out to, uh, to the public and through the website notification system or social media. Great. Great. OK, thank you. The next question I have is about SJ Cog and what kind of opportunities do you guys see right now and what challenges are you facing right now in the work that you're doing? I will I will start from uh, the perspective of the DIBS program. Um, I think because of the pandemic, some of the challenges that we foresee is um, returning to work. And because our mission is to encourage people to um, ride transit, um, carpool, um, it, you know, um, factoring in the, the, you know, safety, we want to make sure that the public is, uh, feels safe and comfortable in doing so. So, you know, we're, we're slowly transitioning back to, to normal, but that will be, um, something that we'll have to focus on heavily to, um, you know, encourage the public to, um, um, continue to use public transit, um, and, uh, you know, consider the, the, the multimodal options. Um, Vampool has remained strong, surprisingly, through the pandemic. Um, we did a, a commute survey, which uh, revealed that, you know, many uh, residents in our county and the three counties were essential workers, so we, we still had a lot of commuters out there, um, so. And I would add to what Yvette was saying about the pandemic. I think in our lives, and I'll speak about myself, it really has changed the way I've worked. Uh, we at the office, we have been in a 100% work from home environment for over a year. Uh, and before that, we were five days a week in the office from eight to five. Uh, that transformed how we did, how we did business on a day-to-day -day basis. We never did virtual conference calls. And in the first month of the pandemic, we had to establish accounts so that we could stay connected and continue business. Uh, we had not implemented DocuSign, you know, the electronic signing of documents. Now we're doing that. It, it really has magnified uh, all different procedures and accelerated our, our foray into the electronic world. From a planning perspective, it has adversely, in terms of challenges, impacted transit. Uh, people, uh, the ridership, the number of people who ride bus and rail transit dropped significantly during the pandemic uh, for obvious reasons. Uh, no, uh, there was concerns about safety and you know, the virus in getting into a closed environment, a bus or a train, and those ridership levels have uh, been impacted so severely uh, that it will take years to recover back to the transit levels, uh, transit ridership levels we had before the pandemic. Uh, and uh, we also saw the pandemic as a light bulb moment in terms of innovation. Uh, when you face these big challenges about a lot of people working from home, it really uh, put a prism or a lens on what the changing priorities are for transportation. Before the pandemic, I think many of us will say that roadway widenings uh, uh, are one of the top priorities for congestion relief, and it, and it certainly still is, but how, how has that changed when a lot of businesses are, are 
adopting a, a hybrid work from home environment. That means less people on the road. Another change, uh, and I, I think you all, if you have noticed in your neighborhoods and the sales of homes, well, it's hard to buy a home right now because uh, the people from the Bay Area and Silicon Valley, now they don't have to uh, live there for their jobs. Their, their offices have either closed or have allowed them to 100% work from home. They're moving into the beautiful San Joaquin County. Yep. And so we're, we're finding that also is going to change the way we do business and assign priorities in terms of the transportation investments. Uh, I did want to pass it on to Christine Corrales because uh, she does have, uh, when we talk about opportunities and technology and innovation, uh, she does have a project we're working on and, and jumpstarting uh, for uh, downtown and south of uh, the Crosstown. Uh, Christine? Yeah, thanks for that, Diane. Um, so uh, I'm not sure how many of you all have already been, um, have heard about the project, but SJ Cog recently was awarded a $7.4 million grant from the state to implement a project called the Stockton Mobility Collective. And so this project is um, sort of a portfolio of a couple of different really big innovations that we're bringing to downtown Stockton and um, the rest of the region, but really focusing in on, you know, our project area, area that's centered in South Stockton. So um, some of the key projects that we're going to be delivering over the next couple of years include electric vehicle share, um, an electric bike share, as well as a workforce development program. And so these are kind of new things that the COG is becoming involved in, um, bringing um, these new services to really uh, close some of the gaps in our transit system and really um, enable people to better access transit. Um, so really quickly, um, our car share project will deliver 30 cars and about uh, 10 charging stations throughout um, the project area, which includes downtown. Um, the project will also be delivering 100 e-bikes in Stockton. Um, we're uh, delivering that in partnership with the Regional Transit District. And again, the, um, the goal of the project is really to help people get to their uh, transit station because um, a lot of times there's this first mile, last mile problem. Like, yeah, there's a station, but um, it's really hard for me to get there without driving, right? So um, we're, we're thinking about these um, investments in tandem with some of the things that Joelle mentioned earlier, you know, we should probably place these bikes and these stations close to where new bike infrastructure is coming in so that you know we're really maximizing the investment from the city and um, ensuring that there's safety for the, the people who are using these um, services. So those are kind of the two key like mobility services. Um, Yvette also mentioned Easy Hub briefly earlier, and this is something that everyone can do today. You can go to your app store and download the Vamos app. And today it'll help you plan your transit trip from A to B in San Joaquin County, as well as pay for the tickets. Wow. Um, and so uh, the, the goal of our project, the Stockton Mobility Collective, is to um, make sure that the, the new car share service and the new bike share service are also part of that Easy Hub um, Vamos application. So you all should uh, check it out and, and test it out for yourselves and see how it's working because there are some new improvements coming down the line that are gonna be linked to car share and bike share. And then um, lastly, there's an incentive uh, program that is going to be paired with these. And um, I think it's a timely kind of uh, resource given that many, many families are starting to, you know, seek work again and get back out there in the community. And one of the hugest, like biggest barriers to, to accessing opportunity, schools and jobs is how to get there. Um, and so the incentive program is really um, envisioned to provide some resources to community members who qualify, for example, community members that may um, have low income or um, limited access to a private vehicle providing these community members with, you know, like a, almost like a gift card or a, a digital wallet on the Vamos app so that they're able to take the bike, take the car to the station or the train station and um, hop on to uh, get to their job or their work. So these are all kind of 
um, projects that we're working on getting launched this year. And we're hoping that um, sometime next year, by next summer of 2022, you'll start to see some of these things on the street um, out in downtown Stockton and throughout the community. And so I'll pause there and see if there, if Diane or anyone else wants to add. I just wanted to add one uh, small advertisement about the Vamos Mobility app. <clears throat> Actually, uh, you, you're going to be hearing it first here, but and starting on Monday, uh, we're going to be pushing it out uh, through all the transit operators throughout the uh, the bus operators throughout the region. Um, between August 1st and 15th, um, if you purchase a bus ticket on the Vamos Mobility app, um, the bus agency will offer will give you two free bus tickets. So, and that's only available through the app. Um, all the bus agencies are participating in this program. And so whether it's Manteca Transit, uh, RTD, Lodi, so, um, you know, and uh, many of the buses travel through downtown Stockton um, from RTD. And so um, I just wanted to throw that out there since we're talking about the Vamos Mobility app. Thank you. Amazing. I love, so this year I've had, um, like I mentioned prior to us being live, um, RTD, and also the San Joaquin Joint Powers Authority. So it's interesting to see now how your guys' program is kind of linking everything together. So very, very cool and um, excited about this. We'll have to promote it. <laughs> awesome, okay. So thank you, Christine and Diane for sharing and Joel for sharing with us a little bit about what we can expect um, in the next year. Is there anything else new coming up uh, maybe in the next year or so that people should be aware of? Absolutely. And we, we always have an exciting platform of projects. And so for the next uh, couple of years, what you'll be seeing next year is two major projects in the region uh, going to construction, the Highway 99-120 interchange project, and then in Lodi, the 99-Turner uh, interchange project. Uh, uh, as we know, that interchange projects uh, uh, improve safety and address congestion relief. Uh, they also are economic development engines to facilitate efficient goods uh, and people travel to businesses in the area. In terms of planning projects, these are where we uh, identify ideas to, to lead the way, or I, I call it uh, map the way, to ultimately a project we can get into the ground. Some of the planning projects we have are uh, the Fiber City Checklist Project, where we're working with all the cities in the county to inventory fiber uh, for broadband needs and seeing where the gaps are. This is really timely uh, because of the pandemic and the work from home and the needs for businesses and uh, residents and schools, residences and schools uh, in the area of broadband. Uh, the other thing that we're looking at is tr a truck study and truck routes. If you know anything about San Joaquin, you know that the food grows here in San Joaquin and uh, the San Joaquin uh, Valley, and the food is transported throughout California, throughout the nation. And that involves trucks and that involves uh, intermodal uh, centers uh, and facilities to transport all of this together. It also, uh, in terms of other goods, uh, we are a warehousing and logistics uh, region where uh, we have more than one Amazon and we yeah. have a, a Wayfair and a lot of those other things that impact the transportation system and offer services for uh, business and for, uh, of course, the community at large. Uh, so we're looking at a truck study to identify the best way to route and, and help gaps in the truck, uh, truck travel system, the state highway system. I also wanted uh, Tim Kohaya to talk a little bit about a, a project that we're currently working on and hoping to get, get to the finish line uh, uh, in summer of next year, and that's the regional transportation plan. Tim? Thanks, Diane. Uh, yes, the regional transportation plan is, you could say it's kind of like the uh, the long range 
planning document in regards to transportation for the San Joaquin uh, region. Uh, it takes a holistic view. It doesn't just concentrate, you know, focus on transportation, but also focus on other issues such as uh, the environmental issues, economic issues, public health issues, because as you know, you know, transportation is so intertwined with other things such as land use. The important things about the regional transportation plan, and I think for myself, these are the most, two important, most important components of this plan is that there's a uh, project list, a regional tra transportation project list. And we call it a constrained list because it, they, have, they have to have identified funding sources. And this, this list of transportation projects uh, these are regional transportation projects, you know, they're major projects. Uh, they have to, it's important because uh, a, a project cannot receive federal or state funding without being on this particular list. So if a project is not on this list, uh, the backers of the project is not going to be able, most likely be able to uh, fund the project and thus build a project. The important, another important component of the RTP is the, the list of strategies or policies. And these are the policies and strategies that will, um, well, there's policies and strategies, and they will uh, basically guide the actions of our agency and the actions of our member agencies for the next uh, several years. So this plan is, uh, has a planning period of a minimum of 20 years, but the, our, the plan that we're working on right now, which is going to be hopefully approved in 2022, will have a planning period about about 30 years. Uh, and it has to be, this plan has to be updated every four years. In addition to the RTP, there's also the sustainable community strategy. And the this plan or the strategy has pretty much morphed into the RTP into one document. And uh, through the, uh, with the regional, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, sustainable community strategy, we have to show to the state that the uh, their, our strategies, you know, if they are implemented, and the projects, transportation projects that are listed in in our in our RTP, will work together to reduce the uh, amount of greenhouse gas emissions that are you know that will be the result of those strategies and policies in our region. So we have to show the state that there we have to there has to be a reduction, a net reduction in emissions. So um, that I know that's a lot. The, uh, and, uh, and because there's a lot to this project. So I think I, I gave a pretty good summary of, of, of the project. That's amazing that it's such long-term planning for 20 years out. Um, can I ask one follow-up question? Um, can you tell me a little bit about who uses this plan? Like once it's created, is it, I know you're mentioning, mentioning it that it's for your organization, um, but like do the your cities um, go and like look at it and use that when they're trying to do their projects. Um, I'm just curious, like who, who uses the plan? Well, that, that is our hope that the cities will use the plan as well. Uh, we can't, of course, we don't have land use authority. You know, we're a regional planning agency. The only agencies that have land use authority are the our member agencies, you know, the cities and the county. So we can't force them to follow our strategies, but we could certainly persuade them to do that and encourage them to do that. And what helps our case is that, you know, our board, direct, our board of directors are comprised of city council people and board of uh, supervisors from our member agencies. So, uh, you know, and once uh, this RTP, you know, our plan is approved, we'll get the blessing of the board, which is comprised of the member, you know, city council people and so on from our member agency. So um, yeah, we're, we're, you know, we usually have a pretty strong influence on, on the actions of our member agencies, just, just through persuasion mainly. And I would add with what Tim is saying, who uses the plan is the San Joaquin Council of Governments. It's our regional transportation plan. It is our roadmap and guidance. It's our, it's our policy document to identify what the priorities are in San Joaquin County for the next 25, 30 years. Uh, we use that plan as a starting point and laundry list for projects to fund. Uh, millions of dollars flow through the Council of Governments to city and county uh, for roadway projects. And those roadway, those state highway projects, those interchange projects, they have to be in the plan in order to get funding. Perfect. Thank you. Thanks for answering my question. I was curious to see like how the synergy maybe was sitting together there. Okay. So we're, we're coming to the end of my questions. 
um, just a couple left. Is there any anything else that you guys think people should know about SJ Talk or about any just anything you think they should know um, that's coming up? Anything that you want to share with our viewers? Yvette, I think you had your hand up. Yeah, the communications person. What's it? So I just want to add to uh, the uh, the regional transportation planning process. There is and and, and you know we we. We look for ways to, to, to have the public engaged in our, in our process and the future of transportation. There is a survey that has been issued for the RTP. So um, sjcog.org is our uh, website where you can access information to um, uh, access that survey and um, any other information. So again, I, don't, I, I just want to reiterate to to go to sjcog.org, the notification system, and subscribe to, um, if anything, the newsflash, and you'll get everything that, that we push out. But definitely the RTP survey is a, is a great way to, to uh, get involved and provide feedback on uh, transportation, future transportation. And I have to emphasize that the, uh, uh, this survey will have a very strong influence. In fact, it will have the major influence on which strategies finally end up in the RTP SCS. And there is a Spanish version as well. Excellent. Uh, Courtney, in the closing remarks for the COG, what I would say is you all, everyone out there, you are our transportation planners. At any, every time you drive, every, where you walk, or when you use a bike, I know that you all thought there's got to be a better way. There's got to be a better way to get from point A to point B. There's got to be a better way to improve the quality of life in this community. Uh, there's got to be a better way for kids to walk and bike to school. That's what we do. We try to find that better way. We do it through an intersection of innovation, invention, and I would say uh, old fashioned common sense. Uh, so that's how I would close it in terms of what we do. And I hope that you were able to get the spirit and the passion of why we enjoy uh, what we do and that we have a great investment and in skin in the game in the success of downtown Stockton and the San Joaquin region. Amazing. Thank you, Diane. Um, and as the last piece, so in the, like earlier in our session, you guys shared that if people wanted to provide their feedback, you guys just mentioned one survey. Um, if people want to just, ask for the questions to any of you about any programs, um, what's the best way for them to do that? I would say immediately, Yvette Davis is our communications staff person. So her email address is davis at sjcog.org. And then Yvette, uh, do you want to describe any other ways? Again, I'll push the website. Um, so, uh, all of our, uh, you know, staff information is on our website, and um, some of the, the program pages have staff contacts. So, um, if you are interested in a particular program or project, um, then you can contact the staff person. Um, if you have any other questions, you can just start with me, and um, we'll find the answers to uh, your questions. Awesome! Amazing. Thank you all for getting through my list of questions. I really appreciate it. So that part's over, <laughs> thank you. And now we do have just a couple of viewer questions. So let me go ahead and read the first one. And uh, this is coming from Johnny Palacios. So his question is, when it comes to transportation needs in San Joaquin County, how far in advance do you start planning? Um, also he says, for example, 50 years from now, do you think we might have flying vehicles in downtown, <laughs> downtown Stockton or San Joaquin County? So part of this, I think we talked about with the plan, regional plan, but maybe if you guys want to reiterate anything. Uh, what did you say? What vehicles? Did you say flying vehicles? Flying. Okay. Yeah. All right. I thought I heard that. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you, we look as far as we can. And uh, generally, uh, by rule of thumb, we look out 30 years, uh, but we also uh, can look out longer. I will say 30 years is, is a very broad uh, time frame uh, in terms of identifying the transportation priorities. And, and let me tell you why. We revisit that 30 year plan every four years because things change. I, I will tell you 
I would have not thought we have advanced so technologically uh, uh, due to the pandemic. It accelerated everything uh, that we're doing, probably wouldn't be doing what we're doing maybe five years from now, we did all in this one year. Uh, so it, uh, those things need to be looked at carefully as we reassess what the priorities are. But we do look 30 years out and we're always reassessing every, every day at work. Uh, in terms of flying vehicles, I say, why not? Who knows? Uh, sky's the limit when it comes to transportation. And when it comes to technology and the intersection of technology and transportation, uh, I would tell you 15 years ago, if someone talked to you about autonomous cars, what would we think? Auto cars driving themselves, being able to break and stop, parallel park uh, 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 in on state highways, uh, you can just put it on cruise control mode and, of course, be attentive at the wheel, uh, but it would be autonomous. I, I think many of us would uh, would wonder whether that is a reality. So I would not say no to flying vehicles. Awesome. Um, and as to your point uh, regarding technology and how much things have changed in the past year for your organization, I've noticed that from many of the like city or city departments I've talked to as well, it's really interesting how it's speed, sped up a lot of um, the usage of technology in government agencies this past year. You know, it's, it's really amazing. Um, and I think it's great for, for our region. It's kind of brought us up to speed with some other regions. I think it's really, really great. Okay, thank you for answering that question. There's just one more question here. And this is a question um, from staff member Jason. That's in regards to the Stockton Mobility Project, is it only limited, limited to electric bikes and vehicles, or will there also be maybe electric scooters, uh, similar to those found in cities like San Francisco and LA? Um, our project scope is limited to electric bikes. Um, and that's, um, I think that's intentional, but also the, pro the, bike, the bike share project is um, derived from some planning work that RTD has been um, developing over the last couple of years. I think maybe some of you or maybe even DSA may have been a stakeholder in the past with RTD's bike share feasibility study. And so that's where, that's kind of like the origin story of the Stockton Mobility, Mobility Collective uh, bike share project. I hope that answers the question there. Um, yeah, I don't think I don't think we're ready for scooters here. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. Maybe in the future. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, I don't see any other questions, and we are um, at eleven o'clock. So, what I'd like to do is just remind everyone that this video is going to be uploaded to our YouTube channel, which is Downtown Stockton. Um, if you are watching this live on Facebook, you've already found us there. But we also have an Instagram at Downtown Stockton and Twitter at Downtown STKN. Um, and I would like to thank all of my lovely guests. So thank you to Diane, Yvette, Christine, Tim, and Joel. Thank you so much for sharing with us what SJ Cog is doing um, and for just sharing with us all the great programs coming up as well from your organization. So I really, really appreciate it. Um, and thank you viewers for tuning in. So. Thank you all for being here today. And with that, I would just like to say, have a great day downtown.